Welcome to Boating Tips Live with Marine Max, your weekly chat about boating products, service, safety, advice, and a whole lot more. Join the fun by submitting your boating questions answered on air by our knowledgeable captains. Without further ado, let's start the show. Ah, uh, that never gets old. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good so, afternoon. Welcome to Boating Tips Live. This is... I don't know. This is, is season two, episode five or six. And today we are talking all things Mercury related, mostly outboard. Um, we might go down a sidetrack to pretty much anything Mercury or anything outboard related, but um, go ahead, bring your questions, drop them in. Now's the time to answer them. If you ever had something that you wanted to know and such an evolving and ever changing market and a truly exciting time to be in the industry. Now's the time to bring those questions. So uh, um, go ahead, pop them right there in the comments and, and we're going to have some fun today. So I'm Captain Nick Pavlakis with Marine Max in St. Petersburg. And of course, that good looking guy next to me is Captain Keith Lake, the face of Marine Max himself. How's it going? That's Keith? me, not Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> And joining us today, we've got Jeff Becker from Mercury Marine. The and Jeff is the senior category manager for 150 horsepower and above outboards at Mercury Marine. So, Jeff, first of all, thank you for joining us today. We're excited. Yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure, pleasure to be here, and excited to talk uh, talk marine industry and all things Mercury. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this episode. So just so you people know that are watching this, we kind of get on here a little early and kind of figure out what we're going to do in the show. And Nick is just a, a mercury freak, man. I mean, he loves Mercs. He loves going up. To, he's been up to the, to the plant up there, Fond du Lac. And just listening to Jeff and Nick talk, you know, before we got on here, you know, I'm looking forward to it because I'm going to learn some stuff today. Oh, dude, what an exciting time. I mean, people talk about like the horsepower races and the muscle car days and it's 2021 and we're going through the same thing in outboard engines. I mean, what's next, right? Yeah, we uh, certainly raised the bar with our most recent introduction and, you know, we're always, always looking, looking down the horizon, looking for new things. So yeah, we're excited. So I guess first things first, we're going to dive right into the meat and potatoes as we have some good questions coming in on the side right there already. I'm sure that everybody wants to know about the recently released Mercury 600. This is something that caught me off guard. I tried to pry it out of Mercury when I was up in Fond du Lac a couple <laughs> years ago. But of course, you know, Mercury was founded on secrecy, basically. And that's why they are always at the cutting edge. But I'm sure as everybody knows, Mercury released a new V12 engine here a couple months ago. That is a dual prop two-speed transmission, 600 horsepower monster. And obviously the reason for an outboard this big is the manufacturers are, you know, they keep pumping out these 40 foot plus 50 foot plus center consoles. And uh, I'm really excited to hear about that. But a little known thing about Mercury is when they're, you know, when they're working on these projects, they're not calling it a, a 150 four stroke. They're not calling it a 400 mainline. They've got different code names, and I think that's so cool. So, so 150. Correct me if I'm wrong. The 150 was Operation Bedrock. Yeah, that was correct. And the 400 was Bull Shark, right? Uh, yeah, the 350 400 launched in 2015 was Bull Shark. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I gotta ask, what is the name? What is the code name for the 600 V12? Uh, so so it, it uh, slips out every once in a while so if you hear a interview every once in a while somebody will slip the name in but it was it was known as project stingray stingray that's pretty cool so i guess let's dive right into that 600 you want to tell us a little bit about that engine and uh and, and what kind of went behind you know what need went behind mercury going completely outside the box and not just creating a a larger outboard but an outboard that really is so innovative innovative that it is truly different 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, to your point around, you know, the secrecy and everything we go through. So we actually uh, kicked off the program in 2016. Uh, so it was a program that uh, was just about five years exactly from start to finish uh, when we when we officially kicked it off to when we announced it uh, a couple months ago. Um, and really, you know, what we do is we start all of our programs with a lot of market research. So trying to understand who the boaters are, what they want from their boat engine package, um, you know, what, how they want to use their boat, really looking at the trends. Um, so we spent about 12 to 18 months doing market research on this this high horsepower, large boat market. Um, and I think we've all seen the trends. You know, you mentioned more and more boat builders introducing 40 foot plus outboard powered center consoles. But we're also seeing boat builders who, you know, historically have been diesel pod or diesel inboard manufacturers right. introducing outboard. So those customers, you know, and really especially in the, in the saltwater space are, are migrating to outboard power. Uh, and a lot of these boat builders are, are finding ways to, to introduce outboard power models to keep those customers in their brand. So, you know, we looked at the market, um, you know, we saw those trends, customers looking at bigger boats, customers adding more features and amenities, you know, even boats that have been in the market forever, uh, like the Boston Whaler, the 420 Outrage has been in the market for a while, but they continue to add new features, you know, sea keepers, generators, uh, you know, you name it, it's probably on a boat, but they still want that performance. So the 600 horsepower engine, uh, gives those customers that performance that they're looking for, uh, e even in a boat that's, that's been on the market and been successful in the market for a number of years. And everybody's, you know, a lot of people on this 600, you know, they'll say, hey, it's a heavy engine. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, is this engine coming in right about 1,300 pounds? Yeah, the lightest model available is 1,260 pounds. But it's 600 horsepower, so you don't have that need for all these... Um, you know, multiple engine boats, you know, four engines, five engines, you can, uh, you know, kind of chop that down. Correct. Yeah. From a, from a horsepower to weight standpoint, you know, when you look at naturally aspirated, uh, you know, it's, it's really on par, uh, especially with everything else, you know, our 300 V8 Verado, uh, 300 horsepower, 600 pounds, uh, right about that, that 0.5 uh, horsepower to weight. Same with the 600, it's, you know, 600 horsepower, 1260 pounds, uh, the, the one difference there is that, you know, the 600 has integrated steering. So all your steering components are located on engine versus having a steering system that's in the boat. Uh, so it's a little bit apples to oranges when you're comparing um, also to, to some current outboards in the market as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. And especially, I mean, I'm sure I mean, these I mean, they even kind of hinted at this a little while ago before the engine was out i mean in its essence correct me if i'm wrong the 600 is not a go fast engine necessarily it's more made to push those monsters through the water i mean three engines that's six propellers that is 1800 horsepower i mean it's just to push these 42 outrages these 46 valhallas these the these monstrosities through the water that you know previously you'd be looking at you know the 450 yards to go fast engine no doubt and i mean this is a little bit more of a you know displacement monster for lack of better words correct and that was that was really one of the things that we learned from our initial market research was you know a lot of our our core customers that are buying mercury product today uh and have outboard powered boats you know, their boat does 65, 70, 70 miles, 75 miles an hour. And that's actually, you know, that's as fast as they want to go. They don't feel the need to go faster. But what they really want is a boat that optimizes where they spend all their time, which is cruise speed or mm -hmm. more slow speed around the dock, right? So they're looking for improved cruise fuel efficiency. They're looking for, you know, maybe a slightly faster cruise speed. So instead of cruising at 40, they can cruise at 45. They're looking at better NVH uh, throughout the range. Um, and really just an overall optimized experience, which is what the new 600 horsepower Verado provides them with all the features and benefits and innovation that's in this engine. I think the best way to explain that, Keith, have you seen a video of the 420 Outrage with um, quad 450s lined up next to the 420 Outrage with triple 600s? And in a comparison, kind of neat, right? Because out of the hole, the six, the one with the boat, with the 600 just takes off. It gets up and it just gets out of there like that. And right. the one with the 450s is behind it a little bit. And 
it takes it a little little while to catch up because it's 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 quicker to it's quicker to cruise it's quicker to plane and and i'm not sure what the fuel efficiency numbers are with the 600s but i can't wait to dig into that and then in the long term that but with the 450s and that top end did end up catching up and pulling away a little bit but um i thought that was neat to say same boat two different scenarios three engines versus four engines and exactly where those pros and cons are i mean when would you want to go with the more engines to go fast engines if you spend all your time in a top rpm range i don't really know who does but <laughs> you know that's that yep and, and on that acceleration note i mean that's you know the the two-speed transmission is what gives that the 600 all that acceleration gets it out of the hole you know that first gear uh is all about getting that those big heavy boats on plane uh and and up into that that cruise range as fast as possible and then it'll engine will automatically shift into second gear where you kind of continue on either to wide open throttle or as you settle into your to your cruise speed will you see the rpms change like on your on your tack i was about to like, ask uh, that like you're shifting gears in a car yeah so you will um and and really if you're not watching the tack you know i, I was down at lake x for the two weeks for our, our launch events down there um, you know, been on a number of the development boats, uh, been fortunate enough to do a lot of that. Uh, and if you're not watching the tech, a lot of people miss the shift. Um, so, so every, you know, the, 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 um, system is set up to be dynamic. So even on the same boat, it's not always going to shift at the same time. It's not going to shift whenever it gets to 5,000 RPM or 6,000 RPM. Uh, it's, it's all based on speed and boat load, uh, and time. So if it's a hard acceleration, it, the engine will do all the work. It'll shift into second gear. Uh, potentially at a different spot than if it's a gradual acceleration uh, and you kind of get up into a cruise speed and then it'll shift. But uh, it's about a 20% reduction in RPM. Uh, so if you're watching the tack, you can definitely see it, uh, see the numbers change. But yeah, if you're, if you're not cool. uh, listening for it, uh, a lot of people miss the shift. Very cool. And while we're still talking about the 600 here, uh, we got a question coming in from YouTube by, from Marcus Ton. Um, Yes. How does the steering on the V12 work? Is it by wire or hydraulic? Uh, it is a, it's a, the same uh, steering system that we have today. So it's an electro hydraulic system, um, but everything is mounted on engine. So your entire steering system, uh, all your hydraulics and everything are under cowl. Uh, so everything coming out of the engine uh, is the steer by wire uh, electronic signal going into the engine and controlling the hydraulics of the steerable gear case. Okay. So that's, I mean, just think about it. That's five years pretty much from conception to when you got it out on the market. So now it makes you really wonder what's going on behind the scenes there now that we're going to be seeing <laughs> five years from now, you know, it's just going to blow your, blow our minds, you know? Yeah, we are. Mercury's always working on, working on new stuff and we don't comment on any of our uh, future product development, but we're very excited with a lot of the things that we have in our product development pipeline and, and yeah, we'll we'll keep churning them out as as the market demands it. Yeah. Hey, um, Nick was having a little technical difficulties there, so let's um let's spend a time. We can run through some of these questions that uh, are popping up over here. We got um, let's see, Robert Zingle. Thanks for joining us. He's uh from Germany, um, building a boat, a cat. Would like to equip it with two two hundred horsepower uh now whatever that is last year i bought german autopilot so um 200 pair of 200 mercs on there would be pretty sweet i guess um, yeah um so, so from a steering perspective i would uh we can definitely take that question i can take that to my my steering counterpart and try and get an answer for you i'm not an expert uh, unfortunately in some of our hydraulics and our steering systems right. but uh, we certainly can take that um, and, and get your response back here uh, in the comments. Yeah, so this will stay on here, you know, forever. So I mean, we can you go back and you can look at the questions and and uh, stuff like that. Plus, you know, it's going to be on, um, you know, all our blog feeds and and all that stuff too. So, um, hey, Cameron Mays, thanks for joining us. Do you recommend IO or outboard on a two seventy C ray or two ninety C ray? So my personal opinion is if it's going to be a saltwater boat, I definitely lean towards the outboards uh, maintenance wise and stuff like that. You're going to have, you know, it's less issues. I'd say it's just easier and they're, they're made for the saltwater. Um, the IOs, you're going to be, you know, even if you flush it out, you put salt away in it, you do all that. 
you know, it's the salt's just hard on them. You're still going to have to be dealing with manifolds, risers, exhaust, elbows, um, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would, I would agree. It definitely depends on, on your preference and your, your usage of it. You know, you mentioned salt water versus fresh water. Um, you know, I think also it, it kind of plays into, uh, you know, the, your open transom look as well. Right. I mean, obviously having the outboard on the back, uh, interrupts that, that clean transom look a little bit. So, you know, there's, there's, uh, certainly benefits, uh, to, to both, depending on what you're looking to do and what, where you're, where you're looking to boat. But yeah. Yep. And that's actually been down here. It's one of the newer questions on here. That's the same, basically same thing. They're going to order, they want to order a Sea Ray Sundancer 320 and they use it current boat 50 50 fresh and salt water. What's your opinion on the C Core option on Mercury 6.2L 350? So, C Core definitely a great option. It's a lot beefier. It's made for the, for the salt water. Um, and, you know, just like, you know, Jeff was saying, you know, it's just your personal preference on on the style of boat, the look of the boat you want. If you want, you know, you, if you don't really like those outboards hanging on the back, you know, there's the IO option for you. Yeah. And the, the C core provides you that closed cooling, um, you know, keeps that salt water out uh, of the engine. Uh, you have more stainless steel components, uh, both in the drive and, and in engine. So you, you know, have a lot of that additional corrosion protection versus the, uh, the freshwater cooler option. Yep. But still, even I don't care if, you know, IO, outboard whatever you still want to make sure you flush those engines out you know as soon as you as you get them home or if you're running in the salt water and you turn around and you take it back to the lake and splash it in the lake then you know then you're flushing it out really good hey welcome back nick thanks i had to uh replace the cheese in front of the mouse that runs on the thing that keeps the <laughs> wi-fi going here so <laughs> he's good now yeah that's good but live show, yeah, exactly. what are you going to do? But look, man, looks like we got some questions ripping in here on the side. Yep. yep. So uh, let me answer some questions. Let's see. Uh, ben, or let's see, Robert Zengel. My question is, can I use it for servo steering or does this only work for hydraulics? Are there other autopilot options from Mercury? Yeah, so for our 200 uh, and again i i would uh i will defer to my steering counterparts and, and definitely get you an answer in the comments on this one um on kind of the use for autopilot and things like that you know i know mercury has our autopilot system for our verado engines uh, which is you know 250 and up uh, with our joystick piloting um but, but we'll confirm uh, on some of those lower horsepower ones joystick piloting is phenomenal i mean and what a lot of people don't understand too or, or seem to or realize right they think it's for docking okay you know great you know i'm just going to use it around the dock but it's got your autopilot auto heading um sky hook you know all integrated into that so you don't have to go and buy a step separate standalone you know autopilot if it's got radar it's going to be linked in there together your radar overlay is going to paint right on top there if you got a ray marine or a garmin or a simrad or or whatever so yeah, the joystick docking is phenomenal. It's flawless. It's so smooth. It's easy. We've got a lot of videos on that on the Marine Max site. But, you know, then you just, you're running along and Florida is an easy coast. You know, you go up and down, you run north south. So you just, you get a couple miles offshore, you hit that heading hold button and you're going and then you're steering through the joystick, um, track the waypoint, make a route, follow a route. All that stuff is all in that integrated joystick. Hey, while we're talking about joystick, Jeff, do you notice an improvement on the 600s due to the, I mean, the, the lower unit system on these that's a little bit more maneuverable? Do you see it behave any better, any differently, just with that range of motion and and uh, and those dual props, too? I mean, you're moving a lot of water. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, there's a few reasons for it. Uh, you know, you mentioned the dual props. So you have all that blade area uh, providing all that thrust and really getting... Uh, your power to the water uh, and joysticking. You have the increased um, engine steering angle. So in joystick, uh, we have the ability for outer engines and multi-engine applications to go out to 45 degrees yeah, uh, versus, cool. versus conventional outboards, which have a 30 degree steering angle. Uh, and then lastly, um, which is one that, you know, I think definitely takes a while to get used to, but the fact that um, the engines don't turn and it's just the, the lower units that are moving, you have a lot better handling and you don't have all that the shift of weight back and forth 
and it's a lot more stable uh, as, as you're joysticking around the dock. Um, you know, like I mentioned, it takes a while to get used to, but you actually, it almost takes distraction out of joysticking versus mm -hmm. hearing the engines move, hearing some of that shift clunk. Uh, with all the innovation on the 600, there is no shift clunk. Uh, and it's just a very smooth, positive experience uh, in and around the dock with these engines. One of the questions I've had brought up to me a lot, Jeff, is everybody says, oh, yeah, <clears throat> the 600. I don't know if I trust all the seals and stuff underwater with that lower unit moving. You want to know what I say? Mercury's been doing it for years <laughs> on their inboards that are always in the water. I mean, that's been perfected. That, that's been taken care of. I mean, how long is the Mercury... What is it? Is it the Zeus drive or is yeah, it yeah. The, uh... the, the Zeus pod for our diesel applications? How long has that been around? Yeah, it's been around for a number of years. Uh, we definitely took some learnings uh, from that and applied it to this. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, it's, it's, you know, we take a lot of our expertise and put them into these engines and, you know, even though there's a lot of innovation uh, in this new 600, it still goes through the same, uh, levels of testing, the same thousands of hours of testing that we go through with all of our engines, you know, whether it's a 75, 115, uh, the new 600, they all go through, um, you know, the same uh, thousand hours, you know, thousands of hours of testing, uh, on boat testing, in tank testing, wide open throttle testing. Uh, we have a we have a whole you know list of tests that every engine has to go through uh, and accumulate the hours before we feel comfortable. Uh, releasing it to the market and the 600 is no different with all of its, you know, even with the innovation, we pass all of our, our, our long-term uh, durability testing. So hey, just, we were, once again, it was kind of behind the curtain. We were talking about this, which I found interesting. Can you touch on the sound room that you've got there? That's just, that's, that's just cool as, as all get out to me. It, yeah, so so that's one of the things that that Mercury really prides itself on, uh, which which is our NVH. So it's noise, vibration, and harshness. Um, and, and we consider ourselves the leaders in NVH. Uh, we put a lot of effort into uh, making sure that you know our engines are as quiet as possible, and not only quiet, but the sound quality that comes from an engine is is you know more of a, a, a it's a it's a pleasurable sound. It's not um, kind of an annoying harsh engine tone. Um, so, you know, a couple, uh, 2018, end of 2017, 2018, um, we finished, pr um, construction on a $10 million, uh, NBH facility, uh, at That's our campus, so awesome. at our campus in Fond du Lac that has, uh, sound chambers that are over uh, a big pool, essentially that we can put our engines in, uh, run them and pinpoint, uh, where noises are coming from, um, really tune our engines to have the right sound that we're looking for. Uh, and, and we believe this is something that really sets us apart in the industry, um, you know, building into that, the NVH with the 600, the 600 is actually the quietest high horsepower engine we've ever built. No it's kidding. Quiet. So you're telling me that the 600 is just as quiet as a, you know, like even like an inline six or a, or a V8. It, it's, it's quieter than our inline six, 400. No way. It's, a, it's as quiet, uh, as our 300 horsepower V8 throughout the operating room from, from idle oh, wow. all the way up to wide open throttle. Nice. So it's, yeah, it's that, it's that attention to detail. It's that effort that we put in that, you know, makes you know, a pleasurable boating experience on the water um, for our customers. You know, talking about the sound, just when you start up these V8s, boom, that, that, that rumble you get, it's just, yeah. it's, it's neat. You know, you know, we're so used to the Overados just almost totally silent and, and you turn yeah. the key on, the, on these three hundreds now, you know, it's like, you know, you got something back there. Uh, I, I think yeah, that there's the, a great, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say uh, with the 300, we have the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, advanced sound control. Uh, so you're able to, t to turn on and off the sport mode, um, right. whether you want it to be quiet, whether you want it to be loud. Um, the 600, we actually have, uh, it, it's just quiet all the time. Um, which, you know, is again, kind of the coming out of our feedback. Uh, those customers really want that, that quiet experience. Yep. I, I think no matter which outboard brand you're married to, there are three things that, nobody will disagree that mercury does better than anybody else and that's one their propellers mercury props are the best anybody will tell you that two that's their joystick system it's not even debatable and three it's the sound i mean we deal different brands of outboards here but a mercury is going to be the quietest it's gonna sound the best and then i mean you want to you know even go into four i mean 
with a digital throttle shift system, I think that they shift in that gear to best too. So yeah, so def- that, definitely that's my little uh, hot take right there. <laughs> no, we, we appreciate it. And we, we would agree. We, we put a lot of effort into everything and, you know, we think of everything as just, you know, the, the entire boat system, right? It's not just an engine. It's, you know, how you control your boat from the helm with the JPO. It's using, you know, your props and providing that extra performance and getting all the benefits and having, you know, the full range of props from, you know, the inertia ecos to the rev fours and providing mm-hmm. customers, depending on what they want to do and what they're looking for. Uh, all those options to, to really meet the needs of their boat uh, and their performance. That brings me up to another 600 question here, Jeff. What props are on these 600s? Are they a bigger prop? Like on a Yamaha 425 XTO, it's a bigger propeller. Um, I mean, are these, I mean, you're not just sticking two red fours on the back of it, right? I mean, is it just a different propeller altogether? Yep. So, so as part of our engine program, we developed uh, a whole new line of propellers for this, for this, the new 600. Uh, they are contra rotating. So you have the, the dual prop system. Uh, they're the Verado 12 propellers. Uh, we have them in a range uh, of pitches from, from 23 all the way up to 37 pitch. Um, so, so, you know, really to meet the needs of the boat, the application, um, and the benefit of this, you know, the, the entire system being developed um, together is that, you know, we, we designed uh the engine to have big props uh so you can have it's it's up to an 18 and a quarter inch diameter uh so wow. big propellers uh really allowing to get these big boats out of the water and on plane as fast as possible yeah that's a that's a lot of surface area on those propellers um so, you kind of kind of inadvertently we were so tino anthony has got a question here he's he's in a dilemma he doesn't know whether to buy Mercury or Yamaha looks like. So he goes, I'm in the process of purchasing a new center console. My choices are Mercury or Yamaha 250 slash 300. Can you discuss your reliability numbers versus the Yamaha? Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, our, you know, especially with our new uh, V6 and V8 product, you know, they've gone through you know, thousands of hours of testing uh, before they even leave our facility as part of the program. Um, you know, from a reliability standpoint, we continue to improve on our warranty rates, uh, continue to provide, you know, po- a good experience for customers. You know, I think historically, uh, people would say, you know, if you want reliability, you, you go Yamaha. If you want performance, you go Mercury. But I think with our, you know, you know, with a lot of our recent product introductions, we're really changing that. We're continuing to improve on our reliability, continuing to, um, to, to make that experience better for customers. And, you know, I think we have you know, one of uh, the, the, the leading um, reliability numbers and, and lowest warranty numbers in the industry. Here, here's my take on that. Um, I'm a big Mercury guy. I'm a big Yamaha guy, too. I think that they are two of the most spectacular engines on the market. What I've found to realize is, I mean, first of all, um, I'm going to say that Mercury is is definitely a excellent run company i mean mercury's product is superb but i think that even more impressive is is how awesome you guys are as a company right here in america right here in fond du lac for the bigger engines and wisconsin and just dealing with mercury from an ownership standpoint i think is a spectacular experience and um yeah i mean you you've heard that a lot if you want the performance get the mercury if you want the reliability get the yamaha you want to know when i stopped saying that i stopped saying that when you guys came out with the 150 with that four stroke the operation bedrock and if i'm correct that's the whole point of that engine was to kind of shift that paradigm and say hey we're going to be known as reliability too and there's charter guys out there i know charter guys you can probably smash these numbers i know guys up in new england putting five thousand hours on those 150s I mean, I mean, how many guides do you know out there that are putting four or five, six thousand hours on a 150 Mercury? And, and that's kind of when I was like, okay, you know, enough with that whole Mercury is not reliable talk. I mean, they're, I mean, they are reliable engines, and that was the whole point of you know developing that 150 in the first place. Yeah, it, uh, you, you've uh, you've cracked the code on our name there, right? Bedrock was really, you know, that was the first big engine program that really set. Uh, a lot of those stand reset a lot of those standards for us and you know drove that further innovation with then you know the 75 115 coming after that um you know the the 175 to 300 after that and now the 600 uh, i think the other thing that we we put into a lot of our new engine programs as well is you know mercury also has a a, a line of commercial engines uh, known as our c pro product uh, and those engines are you know designed developed engineered 
uh, for the harsh commercial environments, those customers that are putting on thousands of hours every year. Um, you know, boating is is their life. It's their their livelihood, um, and they rely on their engine. And, and with our all of our new engine programs, um, you know, we bake in all of those requirements for the CPRO high hour commercial engines uh, into our program requirements. So, you know, all of our engines are designed uh, to, to last thousands of hours that we have that we see, um, you know, that potentially some pleasure users may never get to, but, you know, those co commercial customers get to um, in, in no time at all. That's going to, that's going to kind of tail, um, tail us into our next question here from Chris tips for breaking in a new outboard. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but are you guys testing every single engine or is it a spot test? Uh, so, so as part of our manufacturing process, we do have a hot tank, a hot test cell. So every engine yeah. runs across our hot test cell. Uh, it's not, That's a, big. Signif it's not That's a significant big. amount of time. Yeah. But every engine gets started and run through. Uh, and then we do have a break in procedure, uh, in our owner's manual, um, for, you know, the number of time, uh, kind of the varying watt, things like that, uh, to break in a new engine. Exactly. Yeah, read, read open up your owner's manuals and read through there. You know, the in different engines are different. You know, some of them you may have the first, you know, two hours you're running it for like three quarters throttle for 10 minutes. And then one minute you're going to go wide open and then you're back down into that three quarter range, you know, and then just keep burying it. Some of them are turnkey and just, you can just go ahead and go, you know, so, you know, open up the book and read through it and you'll be better off for it. Yeah. Um, Before we start ripping through some more questions here, one of the things that I wanted to talk about with you, Jeff, is let's talk about some of the different departments of Mercury. I mean, everybody thinks Mercury, they're thinking Mercury outboards. But let, let's break that down even further between Mercury Mainline, you know, the Pro XS series, the C Pro series, and of course, Mercury Racing as well. Um, what does all that mean exactly? And what applications are that for? Yeah, so, so as kind of a part of the Mercury umbrella, uh, we have an, a number of different sub brands uh, on our outboard line. Um, as you mentioned, you know, we have the, the conventional, the, the Mercury four stroke brand. Uh, we have the Pro XS brand. We have the Verado brand, uh, the C Pro brand, and then our, our uh, high performance racing. Uh, each one provides customers uh, a little bit different, a little bit unique of an experience. You know, I think we see our four-stroke line uh, really as that, um, you know, that most competitive product line that has a number of options available to it. Um, you know, everything uh, low horsepower is considered in the four-stroke brand. Uh, when you get into the higher horsepower stuff, you know, uh, on the 175 to 300, you have a number of options with four-stroke. You can get mechanical uh, throttle and shift. You can get digital throttle and shift. Um, they have the conventional midsection. Um, you know, they're offered in a number of different colors. Uh, so really four stroke is that brand that, you know, provides us competitive product performance, competitive pricing, um, you know, a really good uh, overall, you know, low cost of maintenance, so overall good experience. Our pro access brand uh, is, is kind of that next level up those customers that are looking for uh, a little bit more performance. Most of our pro access engines get sold uh, into, you know, freshwater bass fishing. Uh, it mm -hmm. is kind of the, the, the engine that, that most uh, freshwater fishermen, especially in the bass segment look to, you know, a little bit higher RPM, uh, a little bit more performance versus your your four stroke lightweight. Um, you know, still overall, you know, a very strong you know uh, performing engine. Uh, our Verado brand really is kind of the the, the premium um, brand in our portfolio. It is really the engine that gets all the bells and whistle, whistles. Uh, you have the AMS midsection uh, providing you know that reduced uh, NBH. You have you know digital throttle and shift come standard. You have all the color options. Uh, really, that overall positive, uh, refined experience comes with Verado. Uh, C Pro, we talked about a bit. Those are uh, engines that are engineered for long hours, heavy duty commercial applications, um, you know, you know, barges and passenger ferries and things around the world. And then our racing division really is that, that high performance, those customers that are looking for every ounce of performance, every mile an hour. Um, you know, our, our racing division takes, you know, what, what we de develop as, as part of our mainline portfolio, you know, look at the 450Rs developed off of the, the 4.6 liter V8 platform. Uh, and they take that and really stretch it to get their, to get their customers and, and provide that, that premium um, performance experience for them. 
So really, it's you know, it's a, it's a full range of, of engines, applications, brands, uh, really to meet uh, a wide variety of applications in the market. Yeah, different different strokes for different folks. So I mean, I guess really, really quick, you're looking at a 254 stroke and a 250 Verado. What differences are you seeing besides you know just the AMS? Yeah, so the AMS midsection uh, is a big one. Um, but then, you know, the four stroke provides customers that opportunity to choose between mechanical and digital. Um, so, so if, 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 if a customer has, you know, potentially repowering from a competitive engine line or, you know, doesn't have digital throttle and shift, they can choose the mechanical option. It's a much simpler repower. Um, but, but really, you know, it's the same base engine platform. It's the same 4.6 liter, uh, V8 block, uh, gear case, same gear case. Uh, they both have color options available with the black plus the three whites. Um, but really that Verado just provides that, that premium experience with the AMS and the DTS uh, really built in um, into, the, into the price and the uh, engine out of the box. Cool. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. You want to start ripping through some more questions here, guys? Sure. So just cut me off if this is one that uh, or if any of these are – ones that you guys already answered when I was getting back up and going, but we've got some awesome questions here. So I guess we got Marcus Tun. How does, how works this steering on a V12? Yep. We Flat covered that one. Okay. All right. So yeah, James, James C is where we're going to leave off right there. All right. So the weight increase is significant, almost 1400 pounds when mounted. How are manufacturers adjusting to utilize the 600? A triple mount is significantly more than a quad 450 setup. Yeah, so this is one of those um, where, you know, Mercury has a, a product, uh, a group of uh, integration engineers and application engineers uh, that, that are in the field that work, um, you know, almost daily with a lot of our, our boat builder partners and, you know, work with them to understand, you know, what the, the transom setup is making sure that their transoms are reinforced and able to handle uh, the new 600. Um, you know, for a lot of boats that, that may be set up for competitive high horsepower, uh, it's, you know, pretty simple. You're able to lose an engine and weight is about the same. Uh, you look at some of the, the competitive high horsepower engines in the market, uh, the 600 fits pretty well in there. Um, and, and to your point, you know, depending on the boat, depending on the application, um, quad 450s may be a better setup for it. If it's a light, fast boat, Quad 450s yeah. may be the right solution. Uh, if it's you know a bigger, uh, heavier boat, the 600s um, certainly um, fit in that application. Um, but really, it's you know a, a lot of the work falls back into our integration and application engineers. Uh, they work with them to set everything up, and that was one of the other things that we did with this program was you know we brought a lot of boat builders in uh, and, and pulled back the curtain earlier than we normally do, um, just because it was uh, making sure that they're ready for this engine. Um, you know, we can really get a lot of that demand out there and market uh, out there at, at launch versus kind of launching an engine and, and having them then start to develop a uh, product for it. Mm -hmm. In that vein here, I want to jump down a couple questions to Emilio Vega. He's obviously got a boat that can handle these. Yeah, that's so a good question. He goes, I am an end user that have currently, he's currently got quad sevens and he wants to repower immediately with the 600s. I'm encountering a huge problem with availability. How can I get them ASAP versus late fourth quarter or first quarter of 2021 or be 2022? Yeah. So, so from an availability standpoint, uh, we, we certainly have seen uh, strong demand for the 600 out of the gate. So we're, you know, working through, um, you know, really trying, working to meet that demand uh, and, and being able to get engines on out into the field and on as many boats as possible. Um, you know, we are, uh, focusing with, with new boat, uh, development out of the gate. Um, but we'll look at, you know, repower opportunities, um, you know, later in the year as, as we, you know, continue to free up production. Um, so I would say continue to work with you, whether it's your, your boat builder or your, your dealer, um, to understand what that timeline looks like for repowering, but we definitely see, uh, a market for for customers who who may have uh, high horsepower competitive engines on there that are looking to get into the new uh, 600 Verado. So so speaking of production, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, you can look around, you know what's good. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is. I don't care if it's a boat part or a something for your iron. 
you know, it's hard to get stuff right now. So are you guys beefing up production and bringing more people in or working longer shifts or, or what's going on up there? Yeah. Yeah. Mercury is, uh, can always, uh, there's always a crane, uh, somewhere on our campus as we look to increase capacity and, and make sure we can get engines out as fast as possible and get as many engines out as we can. And, you know, especially it's, uh, I would say a bit of a a bit of a surprise what the last twelve months has been uh, in the marine market. Uh, yeah, and and we're you know continuing to to put on as many shifts as we can and get as many outboards out as we can to to meet demand. And you know the six hundred will be no different. It uh, will be will be uh, manufactured in in our facility in Fond du Lac, and we'll have a dedicated line for it. So uh, definitely looking to to get that production out as fast as possible, along with everything else that uh, we're, we're catching up on in the high horsepower space. Right. Well, we we wouldn't be doing everybody justice if we just answered the happy question. So let's uh let's answer yep. a negative question. I mean, it's already there anyway, so we might as well address it. We got Alan here that says, "I just received a recall on my 2021 150 horsepower most reliable engine ever made <laughs> due to an out of specification IAC valve. Doesn't Mercury perform quality inspection on components when received to avoid this type of situation?" Uh, uh, we do, unfortunately, you know, you have a few that, that slip through the cracks. Um, but you know, I'm, you know, and, and so it's a, uh, one of those things that, you know, we, we made the decision to, uh, to, to issue that recall and get that fixed for those customers. Um, you know, hopefully it's a, a pretty simple fix, uh, to, to get their, uh, engine back in, uh, get that, get that IAC valve replaced. Um, but you know, every, every once in a while you have a few things that slip through, you know, when you build hundreds of thousands of outboards a year. Um, but, but I think overall, you know, mercury quality, um, speaks for itself and, and we, we continue to see improvements in our warranty rates, um, in, in the market as well. I think the only thing that is as important as the product that a company is putting out is the group of people standing behind them. And, and I truly do think that that's equally important, man, have I seen mercury stand behind their product and, I mean, they're proud of it. They are as they should be, but you know, there, there is something to be said with that peace of mind, um, dealing with Mercury Marine. Absolutely. From the, you know, the techs, the schools they go to their representatives. I mean, we're lucky here. We got, you know, I got Tori Roberts here and then Matt Simon, you know, that are, and then all the, the, the techs and everybody that, you know, work underneath them at, at Mercury. And I'm proud to say both those guys started right here at Marine Max Clearwater, you know, and, and worked their way up. So, uh, you know, kudos to them and good for you guys for hiring them because they're, they're two top notch, top notch guys there. Yeah. Yeah. We are, uh, very happy with our service network and, you know, all of our dealers that, that support us as well. I mean, the dealers are kind of our first line of defense oftentimes to handle a lot of that that gets back to us. So. All right. You want to take a couple, Keith? Sure. We got uh, Marcus again. Marcus Tan. He goes, "Are there any update plans with additional features for the first mate system? For example, GPS tracking or alarms for the bilge area?" For it, it, yeah. So we're always uh, always working on new stuff and always looking for for new features to add. Um, that that falls uh, unfortunately under our controls rigging bucket I can, or our controls rigging category management team. Uh, but I can take that that info back to them uh, and, and certainly provide uh, an answer to that. You know, I know the first mate is is certainly a, a very innovative system that that we launched uh, recently, providing that kind of wearable uh, wireless lanyard system. Um, you know, with the safety features of of man overboard uh, and some of the, the the security features as well for your boat and engine. So, uh, continuing to add features to it um, and and good feedback like this that we can uh, put into new new product. So, hey, Keith, that, that brings up a good point. Do those systems, are they acceptable regarding a new lander law in Florida? Yes. Yeah. So, like, developed by, like, like Fell Marine. Interesting. That developed the, the wireless kill switch. Um, yeah, and they've got, you can get multiple bands, you know, that you can put on so that, you know, if you fall in the water, it gets wet or... I think it's by water or maybe might even be by distance. If you get so far away, then it'll shut the, the boat off. So if you've got passengers on your boat, not necessarily a driver running the boat, 
you know, if somebody ends up getting it falling overboard, you know, it's going to shut that engine off. And then you do have the ability to repower it back on. There's just a, a reset process. So you can fire the boat back up, turn around and go back and get them. If you like them, if not, let them swim to shore. Or <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know? Yeah, and the uh, yeah the Mercury first mate system has you have a you have a captain's lanyard and then you have kind of passenger lanyard, and so if a, if it's the, the system actually acts differently depending on uh, if who potentially falls overboard. If it's the captain, uh, it has the potential to shut the engines down. If it's passenger, you get kind of warning bells and everything, so the captain can you know kind of turn around and go back to him uh, and still have full power and everything. So. Right. Very innovative system that, yes, as yeah. you answer, does does meet the needs of, of those lanyard uh, systems. It's great stuff. It's going to save lives. Yeah, it will. We got Barbara Bile over here. Can I replace two 300 Verados on, three se- on a 370 Venture with two 400 Verados? I think that's more of a question for, you know, your C-Ray. I mean, could it handle it? I'd say, yeah, probably. But, I mean, when that 370 Venture was out, I don't think that the 400s were out. So I think that it's going to be above the max horsepower, which is obviously not a good thing to do for safety, for, you know, in, to have a tough time getting insured and, you know, whatever warranties you might, you know, put at risk, even though technically, who knows, maybe it could handle it because um, the 400 Verado isn't drastically different than a 300 Verado, but, you know, it is going to make you above your boots max horsepower, which is not a good idea. So, correct. Hey, Brian Drapp is with us again. Thanks for joining us, Brian. Uh, Good question here. He goes, there are thousands of little boats out there that are running the 2.5 liter racing engines. Are you ever going to come out with any engines that are lightweight with big horsepower we could purchase? Or are you just going to make these heavy four-stroke motors? Yeah, so our our racing division is is continuing to innovate. Um, you know, we, we don't comment on uh, future product development, but, you know, I think they, they take a lot of our, you know, a lot of our base product and, and really, um, you know, launch uh, high performance uh, engines off of that. But the 450R, um, you know, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what that two and a half liter racing engine weighs, but, you know, we have the, you know, the, the 250 Pro XS and the you know 250 and 300R uh, off of our V8 platform that weigh the same as our uh that weighed the same as our Opti platform that it replaced. Uh, so those come in, yeah. you know, five, 505 pounds. Uh, it's a V8 four stroke versus the, you know, the three liter uh, V6 Opti that it replaced. So, you know, we've done, put a lot of work into lightweighting product, um, you know, providing high performance uh, to, to really try and replace a lot of those older um, direct injected two strokes that we do see in the market. There's a lot of bass guys that were real upset about the two strokes <laughs> going away, but I think that you did a good job replacing them. And uh, I mean, they they are lighter weight, right? A Pro XS would be lighter weight and um, than a regular yeah, so, four stroke. Correct. Yeah. So our if you look at our V8 platform, our, our 250 four stroke uh, weighs 527 pounds. Our 250 Verado, uh, which has the AMS midsection, weighs 600 pounds, uh, and our 250 Pro XS weighs 505 pounds. Um, so, so it is the lightest uh, weight of all the options um, there within, you know, kind of that uh, that family of engines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, another good question, Brian. I've definitely stumped here. I, I have no clue about this one. We got uh, DM Beck US Construction. How can I tell if the 502 vessel view is getting fuel remaining from the tank or the engine? I don't know, guys. Anybody know? So, uh, I'm not a vessel view expert. I would assume it should be reading fuel remaining that's in the tank as long as it's set up correctly. Um, but that could be something that, that your dealer could help you with the setup and just make sure that uh, it's reading correctly uh, from a fuel remaining standpoint. Yeah, I mean, that, that vessel view is going to show you fuel rate, fuel burned. Um, I mean, so then if you reset your fuel burned, you know, when you top off with gas or whatever, then you can kind of, you know, reverse the math that way and kind of see what you, you know, see how much you've got. You can figure out how much you got left. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Well, it looks like that's all the questions here, and we're kind of wrapping up as far as time goes. Keith, you got anything else you had at, you want to add, or Jeff, anything you want to add? I'll let you. No, man, I. I'm good. I just, I enjoyed the show, man. I learned a lot, Jeff. Thank you very much for 
for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. And and like I said, you know, the, the 600s are, uh, they're, they should be starting to make their way out into the market soon. And, you know, we had, we had our launch back in February and there were a handful of boats at the, the Palm beach boat show. And so, you know, mm-hmm. we're excited to get uh, more and more people out there uh, experiencing them uh, really, you know, seeing the features and benefits that we have in these engines. Uh, you know, one of the ones that, you know, we, we didn't touch on yet, you know, we touched on the power head and the transmission and the steerable mm-hmm. gear case. The other big one that we put in uh, with this engine and was one of those things that, that came with the start of the platform was extended maintenance. Um, so, so, oh, we know, yeah. so we know, you know, these bigger boats are a real hassle to get out of the water. Um, you know, it's, it's haul out fees, things like that. So you know, with the new 600, there's two things we did for maintenance. Uh, it's got a full uh, top cowl service hood. Uh, so you have access to all of your uh, fluid fills and drains from through the hood. So you can change your engine oil. Uh, you can change your gear case fluid. You can change your transmission fluid uh, all there through the hood with the boat in the water. Uh, and then the second thing we did uh, was we extended the service intervals. Uh, so your traditional outboard service intervals today are 100 and 300 hours. Uh, we've extended those to every 200 and 1,000 hours. So now you think about the 600. Uh, everything at your 200-hour service intervals is done through the hood uh, with the boat in the water. The you know the the uh, top entire top cowl doesn't have to come off for a thousand hours or five years. So really, just making it easy, <laughs> uh, simplifying it. You know, as as we see these bigger boats um, with with you know the the difficulty to to maintain some of these uh, getting things out of the water. Yeah, that's awesome. That's uh, I totally forgot about that. Yep. So Jeff, what are the uh... What are the chances that you can put in a good word and get Keith and I over to Lake X sometime? <laughs> there we yeah, go. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty amazing place for those that haven't been there. Um, you know, we Mercury Carl Keekafer bought the land, uh, you know, yep. a long time ago. Uh, Mercury actually left the facility, uh, but then started leasing it back um, prior to the V6 and the V8 launch, and we've been there now uh, since 2017. So it's it's an amazing facility. Uh, allows us to get a lot of that work done. Uh, it's where we launched the 600, um, where we did a lot of pre-launch work with the V6 and the V8. Um, so, so yeah, we always are uh, p- potentially holding holding some events and things like that. So, so we'll uh, we'll keep you in mind when when we start to think about uh, n- new uh, events at Lake X. All right, we'll be there. I won't I won't <laughs> I won't forget it. I'll, I'll I'll sign whatever NDAs I need you to keep my mouth shut. That's right. I, I don't know. They don't give me the gate code either, so I, I have to call somebody to get in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. This this was a great episode. I I swear I could I could literally have the same episode every week and talk about something Mercury Marine related. There's so many different rabbit holes that we can go down, and there's so many things to cover. And I mean, we could do a podcast as it is, just on you know the whole world of mercury marine and and it fires me up it's uh definitely one of the most exciting things in the in the world of boots right now is everything that mercury is popping out and 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 how great they're doing it too and it is it's uh it's truly it is a lot of fun to be you know working with a company like mercury um alongside them anyways as a dealer and you know selling them too um with that being said we're definitely very thankful for you joining us today and uh, hopefully we'll do it again sometime. And um, who knows, maybe I'll come back up to Fond du Lac one day. Yeah, no, I uh, appreciate the time and yeah, I, I always enjoy uh, getting out of Wisconsin as well and getting down to Florida and seeing, seeing some of those applications as well. So we'll have to make my way through, uh, through your Marine Max locations. If you get up there, make sure you're up there on a Friday, Nick fish fry Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I love Fond du Lac, man. It's like my favorite place in the world. I told you a story earlier and I'll tell everybody watching, you know, Gabriel and I went and we're from Florida. We're always pretty tan. So everybody looked at us like we were aliens <laughs> up there. And and I graduated college at USF, you know, like December 14th. And my boss said, hey, congrats. You're going to be you're going to be selling boats in sunny Florida here right out of college. So in five days, we're going to send you up to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin in December. And it was cold. It was in the 30s. We're playing on the gray, nasty snow that's in a ditch on the side of the road. And we get in an Uber, and they tell us that we came up in a heat wave. And um, 
man, I, I loved it up there. I'll tell you what, you don't, you don't see anybody on the roads all day, but you go into a bar, they got the double bubbles going. They got the spotted cow floating. <laughs> Every single person is wearing a Mercury Marine hat. You've got three generations of, you know, people on the same product line, which I think is so awesome to speak to the people that are making these engines. I mean, you've got grandfathers, grandmothers, kids, grandkids all in there. The amount of women that are in a factory working too is something that kind of catches you off guard. There's so many, so many ladies. And when I asked Robin about that, I said, Hey, it's the majority women working in this factory. And he said, well, it's deer season. All the guys are deer hunting. So, <laughs> so it, it is something interesting. That's just one of the takeaways there, but just every single bit of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into the engine, into the engines across generations is, is truly, truly it's pure passion. It really is. Yeah, no, I would agree. And yeah, it's uh, definitely speaks to uh, the company and, and the industry when you have, when you have those generations of employees that, that are there and, you know, they're, they're working along their, their dad or their grandpa or whoever it may be. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. People that have been at Mercury for 40 plus years. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Today was a good episode, and I uh, would definitely do this episode again. So, Keith, you want to sign us off, tell everybody where to find us? Yep. Just want to say thanks again for watching us. Uh, you can get this on uh, YouTube and Facebook, of course, and anywhere, all of your podcast uh, channels where, uh, you know, iHeartRadio or wherever you want to go get your, wherever you get your podcast from, we should be there. So, uh, once again, Jeff, Nick, me, 